which will give you an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the journals from the editors themselves, um, whether that is in your interest as an author, a reviewer, uh, or a reader, or a deep course with those things. Um, I am going to briefly introduce our uh, speakers. They're going to give you a very short presentation and then ask you a bunch of those questions, which we will probably take out to the coffee area outside so that you can have a, a kind of informal chat and an opportunity to speak to the editors, ask them a question that you have about the journal. Um, so, first of all, I'm going to welcome Rhiannon Pugh, who is an early career editor for Regional Studies, Regional Science. Um, she is uh, based at Circle, University, Circle at Lund University. She's very kindly joined us today. She, Rhiannon has the happy pleasure of being in two sessions at once. Oh, so Rhiannon, come to join us to speak to at Regional Studies, Regional Science. Um, and then unfortunately, she is going to have to go to her other session, but I know that Rhiannon has offered if you see her around at the conference. I'll try and come back. And come Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, yeah. that thing is going to I'll yeah. try to. <laughs> So I do want to have yeah. a seat or yeah, that's me to press the magic button. No, it's not, that's okay. I can you go there. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so um, um, I'm here as part of the early career paper section of RSRS. Um, so I'll just explain briefly what that's about um, and how it works. And we're just going through um, a little sort of change of the guard. So a couple of our editors who've been sitting on for almost a decade, actually, Mariana and Sabrina. Um, who some of you might know, uh, they've both put in about a decade of service helping early career researchers at RSRS, so that's absolutely amazing. Um, so it's time for them to move on with their lives. <laughs> um, so we've had um, three new editors just coming in now this year, and that's Danny, uh, Jesus and Chandrima. Um, and myself, I'm staying on for the, the, next, the next three years as well. Um, so yeah, the early career section is sort of moving on and um, bringing in some, some fresh people, but we're still doing what we've always been doing. Um, and that is basically, sorry, did you want to? No, <laughs> I have to, I have to Basically to provide a sort of constructive hand, hand holding process for early career authors. And I know most of you in this room, some of you might fall into the early career category and that those of you that don't, who are more senior, what I would say, if you can sort of listen and digest it, and please, please, please pass on this information and how we work to your PhDs, to your postdocs, to your departments, because we get so many great submissions that come through word of mouth from members of the RSA that pass on the message about our section. So we definitely see, you know, submissions coming from certain universities where we know we've got someone who's there sort of telling people about us. So please pass on this information because we, we think we've got a really good opportunity here for early career researchers to help them out. So basically, the idea is that we have a slightly more sort of hand-holding, constructive process than your regular journal submission process. That's basically the ethos behind it. And it's obviously aimed at people who maybe haven't, maybe it might be their first publication or they might be quite, still quite new to the publishing world. So the idea is to give them a bit of, a bit of help in that process. Um, and basically what we do is we, we take extended abstracts and we evaluate those for how promising they look. And then we invite a select number of authors, usually about five authors in each round, to work, work with us then to develop a full paper. Um, important things to know about our section as opposed to just the main RSRS section. So these are kind of more specific to the early career section. Um, is that our papers are slightly shorter, they're 5,000 words rather than your usual sort of 8,000 words limit. Um, and you work a lot more closely with your corresponding editor. So we actually, we give feedback and sort of reviews to the author before we send it out to external reviewers. So they actually get our eyes over it and we, we kind of give them some tips to help them then get through that external review process and to massively increase their you know, chances of getting a revisory submit uh, for an acceptable conditions when it goes out to external review. And the other thing that's really great about our section is thanks to the RSA who actually funds it, we get fee waivers for open access publications for all our authors who are early career members of the RSA when they publish with us, which is fantastic because we found there's obviously statistics that show that open access papers are getting more read and more cited. So this is really good for early career researchers to be able to have their papers open access. You know, people who might not have the resources to pay for that out of their own research funding, they get that through their membership with the RSA. And sometimes people have 
um, a question like, oh, but you know, does it cost a lot to be a member for the RSA? And actually for early career members, it's very reasonable, especially if you come from lower income countries because it's also scaled. So actually, if you're from a context where you don't have a lot of resources, um, I don't know off the top of my head, but there's other people who might know, but I think you're looking at kind of 50 pounds or something, aren't you, when you're on the lower band. So um, it's definitely kind of worth doing so that you can get your, <laughs> your paper open access as well. So that's really fantastic. So we use the RSA definition of early career researchers, um, and that's a maximum of years since PhD. So it's basically PhD research and then postdocs and kind of within five years. And you do need to be an RSA member when you submit your full paper. You don't have to be to send your abstract to us because, you know, obviously at that stage, we might just say thanks, but no, you don't need to be a member at that stage. But if you're going to take your paper through the process with us to publish it, then yes, you do need to be a member. And we are very open in terms of papers that we um, accept. We're like open to all topics within the regional studies community. But it, of course, it has to have the regional dimension broadly defined. And what I would say is that kind of insider knowledge from the editor is that a lot of the time when we're rejecting papers at the moment, it's because they're not speaking to that regional dimension. And we say we do accept things that have a more urban dimension, but it's when you're talking more about city region, cities in the regional perspective. So, you know, rather than your kind of neighborhood level sort of analysis. And that is actually probably at least half of the papers that we don't take through is because it's not speaking to that regional dimension. So that's something if you do recommend it to your students to really make sure that they get what we mean by that, that it needs to have that regional. Um, and then the other criteria is really the same that you would look for in any paper, just to have a clear research problem that you're trying to address. And also to have original empirical material. Another thing I would say is, um, just from the advocacy, is we're seeing more and more literature reviews coming in, bibliometric, bibliometric literature reviews, as editors and nodders, this might be a wider trend, I don't know, I suppose that's nice for us to be, have this opportunity to speak, but um, unless it's doing something very kind of different and fresh, we're probably not going to publish a literature review. We, we would consider it, you know, if it did something extra, um, but just a kind of a literature review chapter from a thesis kind of summarised is not really going to be that interesting to us. So it, we're, we are really looking for that more original empirical studies. Um, and we basically have um, on, on the RSRS early career section web page, it takes you through exactly what you need to put in your extended abstract um, with the different sections. So as an early career author, you basically just fill in the paragraphs under each of these and it gives you your full abstract. So it's actually, I, I think it's relatively easy to prepare your abstract for submission because it tells you exactly what you need to put and where. Um, and we're basically up for anything that's fresh, that's novel and that's innovative. And we're here to represent the early careers, the up and coming people, the up and coming ideas in the community and to get those out there. So we're really looking for that new research. Um, and. I'm not actually sure how useful it is to go through this because we're getting such a wide range of topics at the moment. We're just seeing it's getting wider and wider around and we're getting more on, you know, climate change and, you know, just all these different topics. But yeah, basically, as long as it's got the regional, um, you know, lens on it, we're happy to, to look at any, um, any kind of topic, really, as long as it's got that regional dimension. We're very open-minded about our topics. Um, and the last thing I would say is that, like, we generally feel that we have a good community built up around people who've published with RSRS early career and a lot of them have gone on to be very successful in subsequent years um, and obviously some people have said some nice things about us so that's always nice to hear um, one thing that I would like to say is that um, this year when um, RSRS done the um, when the RSA did the awards you know they do best paper for the different journals this year in RSRS it was actually an early career paper that um, won the best paper award for the whole journal. So it is quality content. That's what I wanted to express to, to your students as well. It's not some kind of second tier thing. We're talking about, yeah, these are the best, the best authors and the best research that is coming out. It's just that we're giving that little bit of hand holding on the way to make that a more positive experience, really. So then people can go, you know. Our authors have then gone on to publish in regional studies, main journal, journal of economic geography. You know, they're going straight into these top level um, 
And we like to think that having that kind of insight into the review process, how it works and how you handle it, has kind of helped them on that journey, um, hopefully. <laughs> um, and I myself published my first ever paper through the early career section. Um, so it's very personal to me as well, because that was my first opportunity to publish. So we're kind of passing on that opportunity for other people and helping them to do it. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, and um, we also have the option to do some, although we haven't done it for a little while, some editorials and things if people have ideas that they would like to suggest. Um, so basically, yeah, we, we're currently taking two calls per year. We've just had one closed at the end of October, which we're just, um, uh, we just had a meeting this week to decide which ones to take forward. And then we'll have another one at the end of March. And we've got a really clear website where it explains exactly what the early career workers need to do. So please, yeah, do, us, um, do what you can to help us spread this really to new early career people coming in to RSA. Make sure they all know about it. And they all can benefit from this because it's there for them. They just need to know really that it's there and that we're here waiting for them, basically. <laughs> yeah, thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Rihanna. I think that um, from my own experience as an early career editor, it's such a helpful opportunity to have that mentor session. Next, I'm very pleased to present David Bailey uh, from the Birmingham Business School at the University of Birmingham, who is the editor in chief. For regional studies, which probably doesn't need very much introduction for me, but David, you can talk more about it. Um, and that, that was a terrific presentation by Rianne. And, and it's not just early career researchers that publish in RSRS, yeah. established researchers do. So, uh, yeah, you know, I've had several uh, papers in that journal. And if I've got something coming out, say, of a research project that I want to publish quickly, uh, go through a referee process, but get out quickly, I'll look for that journal. So, even sort of Old people like me publishing it as well. So, um, <laughs> really, <laughs> just saying, regional studies um, is the grandmother of uh, the portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so, it's been around uh, since the 1960s. Uh, we, it covers the development of theories, concepts, empirical analysis, and policy debate <laughs> in the field of regional studies. Um, papers must make a substantive contribution to scholarly debates. Be sub nationally focused. That's often how we reject papers, just reject them because they're not clearly sub national, conceptually well informed, empirically grounded, and methodologically sound. We're open minded. We look at a whole variety of different approaches. We take quantitative papers, qualitative, you know, we're very heterodox and we want to see a variety of different perspectives. We work very hard to try and maintain that in journal as a, as a cutting edge journal that is open to new ideas. Um, Good impact factor, I've been maintaining that. It's gone up in recent years and that's been maintained. Loads of downloads, it's brilliant. Um, big thank you to Tina for that phenomenal figure last year, 600, over 600,000 downloads. Um, last year we published 174 articles, uh, 40 of which were gold open access. So we're a hybrid journal, choose to publish in different forms. Uh, I'm pleased to say we're part of the transformative deal so that if you've got research funding you can publish with us as a hybrid journal that is acceptable to research councils 12 issues a year um so it's, it's a big operation there's the team fantastic team to work with um very distinguished advisory board as well um so if you, if you see any of us at the journal come up and talk to us they're very friendly people if you've got ideas for paper or a special issue um or whether you wonder something is suitable for the journal Come and grab us and talk to us, uh, and we can talk about whether it fits and, and how you can make it fit. Um, one of the things we do are lots of special issues, and we have a nice balance between the journal as a whole and general issues and special issues. It's been about 50 50 in recent years in terms of general issues and special issues. Uh, we've got some great ones out at the moment geography of higher education, great to um, call some of the recent special issues there, some of the ones that are coming in the future. This one is place based industrial. Strategy that's about to, about to um, go into publication uh, next year. So, special issues draw together contributions around key themes uh, in regional studies from the mix of researchers, uh, and we're welcome to ideas for special issue proposals. So, uh, Ben Deruda is our special issues supremo, uh, and he'd be happy to talk to you about ideas uh, for special issues going forward. In terms of the different parts of the journal, we have different sections. 
Um, so one of them is Urban and Regional Horizons, that's edited by the very brilliant John Harrison at Loughborough University. And like with RSRS, we don't do review papers. So other journals do that. Um, so if, if you're just simply doing a review, we are going to publish that. Uh, we can point you to other journals if we do. But what we do with these Urban and Regional Horizons, horizons papers, which are kind of agenda setting papers, there might be a, a review as part of it, but saying, you know, these are the big challenges. We think these are the issues that need to be covered. We think this is where the, the debate is going to go in the future. And they are often very heavily read and downloaded as kind of agenda setting pieces. Um, so very kind of ambitious and challenging, but at the same time accessible for broad audience. Um, policy debate section is led by Phil Tomlinson at Bath. And essentially, this, these are academic papers, but where we're not just trying to talk to other academics, we're trying to talk to policy makers and practitioners as well. So every paper in that section then has a, has a policy kind of implications part. And we're trying to act as a kind of sort of boundary spanner between academia and the policy world. And that actually is why I got involved in the RSA to begin with, because it's always done that extremely well. Um, and that's that's been part of the journal a long time. We're very keen to keep that going. We also do book reviews uh, and Laura Alvarari does that. That's a great way of keeping abreast of new, new books that are coming out. Heck of a lot of work goes into that in organizing it. So she does a great job. Um, and we've also got the main section uh, where people can submit to. So essentially, uh, it's a very dynamic journal, uh, open to ideas, um, and just like RSRS, the editors work very closely with authors to get papers into the best possible position to have maximum impact. Um, so again, come and talk to us if you're interested in publishing with, with us. One final thing, Sally has allowed me to say this, um, one other journal I edit is Contemporary Social Science, which is a broad-based uh, social science journal. We've got three calls for papers coming up. One on just transitions, one on leveling up or leveling down, uh, and one on uh, default places of policy after Brexit. So, if any of those themes are of interest, please come and talk to me about that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Methods. And I think that has created 
the opportunity for very interesting dialogues. So what uh, we've been doing in the last uh, couple of years has have been trying to redefine the uh, intellectual agenda of the journal. And uh, first, uh, when the COVID pandemic uh, hit us, uh, we felt that it was a very important moment for the journal because it had a direct impact on all the topics of the journal. So um, one of the points that uh, we wrote an editorial to kind of say, how are we going to engage next uh, how we are going to engage both in terms of the kind of things that we want to see in the journal but also how are we going to try our own academic scholarship because as you know uh, the pandemic did challenge what was our role of us as academics and how we were relating mm -hmm. to each other the kind of practices of care that we were having to each other i mean what they have known has explained to us is like that's the kind of thing that we have to do one that supports each other and good communities and solidarity and what we argue is that pandemics and life disasters, like austerity, is showing to us that we are not in it together. So I think that has created a kind of activation within the journal and it gets a lot of attention to issues of inequality and so on. And in the last editorial that uh, the editorial team has done together, we have uh, tried to outline some topics that perhaps we think could have more representation in the journal. Uh, one of them is the climate emergency. Uh, we think that there are territorial and political dimensions of the climate emergency that have to be central to the debate of the journal. Uh, another one, I have my notes here, just in case. Uh, we, the other topic is the digital, digitalization and the way digitalization is completely transformed our relationship, our spatial relation. And the third topic that I think has always been very strong in the journal, but I, uh, we all agree that it's probably one of the things we have to be looking forward is. The, the consolidation and the formation of the migration space. But these are, of course, uh, not the only topics of the journal. And uh, as I say, it's interdisciplinary, and we are also really open to what it comes to. And uh, I'll show you some topics in the next slide. I know, sorry, these are our, our editorial team, plus our fantastic advisory board, and our fantastic. Uh, uh, Managing editor and, and team. And uh, these are some of the topics. So we also have a special issues, but we do limit the special issues. We do uh, we do make collective editorial decisions about whether we agree with the special issue. And we often only take a special issue when we think it's making a substantial contribution to the discipline and uh, related to the kind of uh, political moment in which we are uh, which we are working. So we had is, uh, it was it's a fascinating special issue you can see about situating uh, Brexit and how it has influenced different processes, for example, the question of sovereignty in Northern Ireland and Scotland. So I just invite you to see that uh, uh, there's a piece of special issue on migration that one uh, I haven't uh, been the handling editor for that one, so I, I must admit I don't remember exactly what the issues are, but then the, the one on India, which is also fascinating. And, some of them are based around uh, national issues or particular context, but some of them take a more broad uh, perspective. So we also have a special issue coming on infrastructure, which actually looks across very different contexts. And then what we also did for the for the 10 year anniversary, we tried to think about what kind of uh, papers had really marked debates within the journal. And these are a, a couple of examples of uh, papers that have been really influential. Um, uh, Aston Lakes, for example, has been a concept that has lately come to the journal and the journal has made a contribution to really establish Aston Lakes mm -hmm. uh, and Aston Lakes theory as a central point of political theory and of political geography. So uh, just to finish, I would say that, you know, we also get some literature of use and and we would never accept those. Uh, every contribution to the journal has to make a substantial contribution to the discipline. And uh, some of the articles are also theoretically informed, so they focus more on making a concept of contribution. I think the concept of contribution has to be central. So, what we don't publish a lot uh, often is our articles, which are very sound methodologically, but don't make a concept of contribution. So, that conceptual advancement of the discipline has to be central to the journey. So, thank you. 
Thank you very much, Vanessa. That was a really great introduction to the, the topics and themes, particularly of speaking to me. Um, now, unfortunately, I must give the apologies of the social economic analysis editors who couldn't join us today. Um, but I'm very pleased to speak on their behalf and tell you a little bit about the journal and also to answer any questions that you might have afterwards. Uh, so, social economic analysis is um, a pioneering economics journal. And it particularly focuses on the development of theory and methods in social economic analysis and social economics. And similar to the other journals, this the kind of the social element is really important. So that's what the journal is really looking for. It's not a kind of economics method, it's about the application of social based spatial situations, particularly regional, but not limited to regional situations. So this journal is slightly different in that it does accept things of that different scale, including that kind of smaller uh, neighborhood scale, for example, and um, retail studies, for example, is a particularly important area at the moment. This journal has the benefit of involved, uh, being published by not one, but two learning societies, because it's also published in partnership with the British and Irish section of the Regional Science Association International. Um, so it, it engages with those two communities uh, and has a, has a reach through those two um, organizations as well. It's, it's had a reputation for a long time of publishing cutting edge uh, research in the field of social economics, but it's particularly interesting time at the moment, I think, the emergence of new analytical methods, um, methodologies using big data, for example, and I think these are being recognised increasingly in mainstream economics, so it's really interesting also in cases that are at the cutting edge of developing those tools and using new data sets that are becoming available. Um, you can see some information there about its impact factor um, downloads. Um, it publishes four issues per year, so it's one of the smaller journals, um, but each uh, issue benefits from an editorial that's written by the editorial team, and that prefaces each issue and introduces each article, and that's also a really useful guide as a reader if you're getting into the area or you're interested in the topics, be able to look at the editorial which has a summary of each paper on the issue, so that's a really nice feature of the journal. It has, as all the other journals do, a really international um, board of editors and advisory board that support the journal. The editor-in-chief, Paul Elhurst, is based in the University of Birmingham, but we also have an international team of editors um, who support the journal. Again, the journal is very interested in special issues and publishes a range of special issues, often coming out of court cases. Um, but also curated on particular thematic topics. So um, recent ones are mentioned here, so um, advances in social economic stage of analysis, for example, and also one focused on social economic systems. Uh, as you can see, the most downloaded article in the journal was written by the current editor-in-chief of the journal um, by social economic metrics. And um, indeed, this is a theme that I've probably developed through the editorials for the journal to, to show the, the development of uh, social economics and the methodologies and theories associated with that. So that's had a huge amount of uh, views and downloads. If you are interested in putting together a special issue, um, please get in touch with the journal. Um, we're open, always open to ideas, or if you know colleagues who have worked in this area, um, then please invite them to put in touch with the journal. We're also very pleased this year to launch a new section of the journal, which is Reputation Studies. I think this is also a great opportunity, particularly for PhD students or postdocs, to uh, think about publishing a, a relatively small study that may come out of their larger research project. That is an opportunity to, to kind of get a publication, get some experience in that area. So this is devoted to short papers that kind of replicate or extend an already published study. And the original study must have been published in a peer reviewed journal. Um, and then the replication would build on that to, to try and apply the method in different contexts. So I think it's a really interesting. We've got the first one is already been published online, and there's some more information about that available in the journal. But this is, I think, a, a really important area for people to have more open data, more opportunities to engage with other researchers' data sets. So this is a, a great innovation in the journal. That's so just a, a little bit of information about social economic analysis, but feel free to catch me afterwards if you have any questions. Um, last but not least, I am pleased to welcome Sally Hardy, who is the executive of the Regional Studies Association. And we're going to talk to us about area development and Thank you very much, Abby. Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, the editors send their apologies that they can't be here. 
I'm going to very quickly run through area development and policy and then say a few words about a forthcoming new journal um, called Finance and Space. So um, area development and policy is the is the currently baby of the of the suite of um, journals. It's actually just gone to primary school. I think it's in its sixth volume. <laughs> so uh, growing up, growing up rapidly. Um, this journal concentrates on issues relating to the great, great BRICS. Um, so Brazil, Russia, India, China. Um, and it takes submissions from anybody that are constant that, are, that concentrate on this geography. So you don't have to be living in those regions in order to submit in the journal. Um, it distinguishes itself from all other journals by allowing authors to write in the um, in the tradition of their geography. So Brazilian papers can often be more descriptive. Chinese um, uh, writers often uh, refer to Chinese theoreticians who are less well known in other parts of the world. And this journal makes an effort to referee the papers in the territory from which the paper is authored, and then to have an international referee as well. Um, and we think it's the first journal that took this more open approach um, to, to journal publications. It is, um, it is a journal that will have an impact factor in June next year. So at the moment it has a mock impact factor. From June next year, it will have an impact factor. And um, we think that will make a big difference to um, the number of submissions. Um, it did very well last year for a very young journal with over 30, uh, almost 35,000 actually uh, downloads and views in 2021. So the managing editors are currently Nick Dunford and Yu Wei Dong. Um, both of these um, editors in chief are based in, in China, in Beijing, it has an international lineup of editors sitting alongside them um, and a very international editorial advisory board, which I guess is what you would expect from a journal of this kind. Um, has a, um, an early career um, editor. I'm not sure if I've missed other um, presenters, but all of our journals have early career editors. And this is a um, capacity building um, editorial role on our journals. We always advertise those um, positions. Nobody gets a free ride into those positions. Um, the positions are for three years, tightly restricted. Only people are only renewed if they're moved onto the main editorial team. So you'll never see an early career with a rollover. Um, and all of our journals now have digital media, so social media editors. And in most cases, um, we advertise these um, positions as well. And in most cases, the digital media editor is all, also a papers editor. They would get fewer papers to manage through the system um, to allow for the work that they do in, in digital media. But this is a way of making, ensuring that the articles that we publish are brought to the attention of the community. And we would do that through Twitter, through LinkedIn, Facebook, WeChat for Chinese papers. We try to use the right um, um, media outlets and media channels um, for, for the article in question. Um, and I must acknowledge the help that we get in this from the publishers. So we work with their professional marketeer, Ben Hudson, who um, really amplifies the, the reach of the social media work that we do. So if you're interested in submitting um, ideas for special issues, then it's Mick Dunford. His um, email address is access it, but actually he's in Beijing. Um, selection of articles. This article has been um, downloaded coming up for uh, 19,000 times. Um, it was actually an article that was presented um, as an AA Dream annual lecture. Um, just before the um, just before the lockdown started, so I was actually there and heard it in person. Um, yeah, this is this is um, yeah um, uh, an article written by the by the two editors in chief, and, and very naturally on China's Belgian road, it got a lot of attention. So, <laughs> so um, this is a forthcoming journal, Finance and Space. Um, it will start to, it will formally launch in 2024, um, but some articles may be going online in um, 2023. Um, it will be launched um, a bit like the Spatial Economic Analysis um, Journal, 
um, as um, an association between the Regional Studies Association and FinGeo, which is an informal but global grouping of financial geographers. And, and that, that grouping has now spread beyond financial geography. There, there are many people in that group who are not geographers. And the journal, um, as you can see from the title, is not aimed only at geographers, although we do imagine there will be quite a lot of papers. Um, but the format will be hybrid, so you don't have to pay to publish in the journal. Um, but if you want to publish gold open access so that people can read the article for free, then it's possible to pay an article processing charge. Um, in uh, contrast to our other journals, um, this journal um, articles, accepted articles, will go online as soon as, soon as they're accepted. So there will be no eye first or, or preview articles for this journal. As soon as it's been accepted, it will go online with the full citation details, and that is very advantageous for the authors. It will be included in the Regional Studies pack. And what that means is that as a New Start journal, it will have the same footprint as the gargantuan Regional Studies. Um, and, and that just works so well for, our, for all of our journals. Um, so it will have very high visibility. All individual subscribers, libraries, and regional studies association members will have um, access to this journal. So if you're interested in talking to me about this journal, I can also talk to this. We will shortly be announcing the editorial team and the, um, the first of several calls for papers. Um, and we will look at um, special issues. Unusually, normally we don't look at special issues until journals are uh, three or four years established. But because of the different way in which we're going to publish this, we have the space um, to look at special issues. And I think that's me, me done. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. OK, thank you very much. That uh, brings us to the end of the presentations of each of the journals. Thank you to our speakers, uh, Rhiannon in absence, uh, Vanessa, David, and Sally for presenting about the journal. Um, as you can see, more information is available online. There is a lot of information on each of the journal websites if you have any questions about how to submit. If you're interested in the content, the best place to start is by looking at recent papers published in the journal. There's also information about how to submit special issues or current papers called for papers as well. Now, we've got plenty of time for questions, and this is a, a kind of golden opportunity if you have any questions to ask directly of editors. We're also joined by Jennifer Clark, who is the deputy editor of Regional Studies. So we've got more, uh, more editors on, on hand if you have questions about Regional Studies. If you're not sure what to ask them, I would start with uh, asking them for their top tips on submitting to their journals if you're interested in doing so as an author. Um, we're, we're quite a nice small group, so I think there was a suggestion that perhaps we might move into the coffee area just out here so that we can have more of an informal chat. Hopefully, the presentations have shown you that everyone is very approachable. So please take the most of this opportunity. Everyone is here to answer your questions. So they would uh, love to have a chat with you over coffee. And um, thank you all very much for joining us. We hope you enjoy the rest of the conference as well.